listening to Parent Projects. Hey, welcome to this week's show, everybody. Certified public accountant, author of a couple of books, Credit Hill, Power Up, founder of Debt.com. Uh, Howard Dvorkin is with us today, and you're going to get some awesome opportunities to get some insights in how to not take no for an answer. How do you keep working through it, pacing things along? Uh, it is ultimately a debt week for us, and we'll be talking about those issues for those of you that have a parent project and debt uh, with your family may be weighing in some way, shape, or form on the project, so stay tuned. You're listening to Parent Projects, a family media and technology group production. Now here's your host, Tony Siebers. And welcome everybody to this week's show. Uh, we've, we've got Howard Dvorkin, the chairman of Debt.com, and I really had a, a blessed opportunity to have some conversations before we get to sneak in with you guys. Uh, and I, I think it's one of the, the top things I really look forward to you being able to understand is how to keep moving. Uh, and, and that theme, the tools that you might need, the complexities in here. Uh, Howard, welcome to the show. Thanks for joining us today. Thanks, Tony, for having me. And uh, Fort Lauderdale, Florida is, uh, is where you get to hail for, for today. Uh, how long have you been out in Florida? Uh, came down here for spring break and never left. Uh, so I hail from New Jersey originally, uh, which I was just there this past weekend and had a great time. And it reminds me of the roots and then kind of what makes my fiber. But certainly living in Florida uh, uh, allows me to have certain opportunities, which is nice weather year round and a uh, little heat in the summertime, which is a little rough, but I'll, I'll take it rather than the bitter cold. But you know, it's interesting on this topic, and I was really excited to talk to you today about the topic, simply because, you know, we in Florida, when I first moved down, it was known as a retirement capital of the country. And right. Not so much now, but there are still a lot of seniors that have worked up north or in other areas that have moved, you know, they moved down to retire because of the no income taxes down here, and also the no estate taxes. Uh, yeah. There are no estate taxes in Florida, which is uh, opposed to some of the other states. So it's a great place to live. It's a great place to uh, be. And certainly uh, for seniors, it's a little bit easier for them. Well, over you, you know, one, one, one of the common things, whether it, it, in Arizona, you and I share that, right? Arizona, although my heat, I, I would gladly exchange. There's a lot of times I want to exchange my heat with you. With that. I can, there's only so many over 110 days we can really take in the valley. I'm honestly good to 110. But what, man, over that, it just even gets an army guy like me, um, you know, but but even if if those if people aren't still in that flocking where it's just seniors or the difference uh, or, or, or totally senior centric as more people go into your state. I think one thing we do see around the country is that separation. The fact that that, um, you know, there are generally we see older people settle down in the south where it's warmer. It's easier to get along. As I start getting older, I do. That's one thing I probably like the heat for. It's easier for me to move around. Don't and say that, Tony. Don't say that. <laughs> I'm, I'm just an honest broker. I'm an honest going, broker bro. here. <laughs> but but that distance causes uh, causes a lot of, of um, it causes uh, sometimes panic, fear, anxiety. You're not sure you don't get a handle on it surprises pop up and debt is, I, I, I mean, I, it's already hard enough. It's something that is difficult in marriages and families in the first place. But if you're separated from your parents and they live in a different state uh, than, than where you're hammering it out, maybe you're still up in Jersey and working through your, your day off of that, man, money can not only get away from you, but if that happens to your parents' situation, um, you know, you get a lot of anxiety about it. I guess I might kick off with a funny question. I mean, we see in here a lot of debt. That's a conversation sometimes, and, and we'll get too far into public policy, but does debt matter? Why does debt matter? I mean, uh, 
debt that? certainly matters and it causes all sorts of stresses. It can cause you stress when you're young and in debt because you don't know how to pay your bills. It causes family problems and family issues, fighting, divorces. Uh, it causes physical health issues. It causes mental health issues. Debt is a serious pl uh, problem regardless of what cycle of life you're in. Certainly with seniors, seniors in debt is very scary because when I first started uh, in the debt relief business, seniors, they, that was still the depression generation. What do you mean I'm in debt? I have to take care of these bills. I can't retire until I have all my debts paid off. Well, now you're seeing people in their 60s retiring with debt and basically their information, their, their, their income is derived from either retirement benefits or social security. So it is incredibly challenging to retire with debt and get off uh, the treadmill of debt if you don't have the funding. That is fascinating. I don't think I, I don't actually think I've, I've heard anybody ever bring that to light uh, so clearly that movement in retiring with debt from, from satisfying debt before you go out, but actually making debt a part of a retired lifestyle. Uh, it kind of feels like you're playing with matches at some point in time, especially if you're going to be on a fixed income. Uh, well, what never before have we seen seniors coming to us in the, in the amounts that they're coming with debt. And it's a very tough thing. I mean, the fact of the matter is debt is the greatest non-discriminator of all times. Doesn't care if you're blue, purple, yeah. green, doesn't care if you're short, fat, doesn't matter. Right. It affects everything. It attaches on. And if you're paying 20% or more every single month, guess what? Yeah. It's not going away anytime soon. So is there generally a solution to most debt situations or are there some that are just not, you, you know, is there something out there that you just really need to stay away from that thing? in your experiences and seeing all this debt? My companies, my prior company, and certainly debt.com, we have counseled 10 million people over the course of the last 30 mm -hmm. years. So we've seen it all. There's not one person that we can't help. We throw up our hands. Not one. Never has been, never will be. We yeah. will help anybody. And I'm not just saying us. There's a solution for everything. Sometimes people call our offices and they just need some a friendly voice and, and need some guidance to tell them how to get out of debt. Some need education, some need counseling, some need what's called a debt management plan, where we basically negotiate with the creditors and try to get them, uh, get them out of debt in a reasonable amount of time. Sometimes it's a little harsher and we offer a debt settlement program where you're paying pennies on the dollar, but there are some drawbacks on that sometimes bankruptcy, which we try to avoid at all costs. People come to us with being behind on their houses, and certainly it's our job to keep them in their houses. Uh, yeah. Certainly people have medical bills. Um, those are a lot easier than you would think because the hospitals don't want to sit there and sue people. They're a community-based uh, uh, group, and they don't want the reputation that they're suing people for tens of thousands of dollars. So sure. it's easy to get out of debt. What you have to do is want to get out of debt and realize the first step is getting out, recognizing that there's a tr there's a problem, picking up the phone and asking for help. And as humans, and, and certainly we're rough, tough guys, right, Tony? Yeah. We don't want to ask for help. We'll just do it ourselves. Well, this is a completely separate thing. Nobody taught us about finances when we were growing up in school. We kind of learned it on our own. And certainly we need to continue to learn. But sometimes learning entails going to an expert and understanding how, what is my path out of debt? I heard, what? I heard a great quote today and it said, you can never beat a guy that never gives up. And you said it, and it's a great quote. I think it was by Babe Ruth, if I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. that quote, so you can't give up. You can't fall down. You can't fall back. If you do, just keep swinging. 
And in order to beat debt, you got to keep swinging at it. Yeah, I, I, I like that a lot. And I think you, the context that you set of life is hard enough <laughs> when uh, debt matters because of the complexities that it adds on top of all of that um, just becomes that weight. And so it's I think it really is natural to think that the solution is going to be a structured solution. If you're not able to get there, having somebody from the outside be able to just simply restructure uh, what's going to happen so that you can start working your way out of that. That's a great way to start transitioning out of that fear and that anxiety and moving to a little bit of, of, of logic there. So I, that I do love. What I'd like to do is we're, we're going to take our first break here. But when we come back from the break, I'd like to talk about how to approach some of those conversations with the families. What, what are the dynamics that are involved when um, you have to start talking money with your parents? And, and I know you've got some personal experiences too to all of that. So Let's, uh, we'll throw this out to our sponsors. Hey guys, uh, this is Tony at the Parent Projects Podcast. And if you are powered by coffee the way that I'm powered by coffee, I think you'll appreciate knowing a way that you can help the last lost and least of us that didn't have a great transition. You see, the Refuge Coffee Company is a social enterprise operated by Catholic Charities of Central and Northern Arizona, where they use this coffee and this business model to help homeless veterans at the Manor House Transitional Community get back on their feet. Help a veteran turn a handout into a hand up by giving them the opportunity to earn your business. Purchase coffee today at therefugeaz.com. That's the Refuge az.com. If you order six or more bags, shipping will be free. And if you tell them that Parent Project sent you, I'm going to send you a travel coffee mug. Thank you again. And let's get back to the show. Welcome back, everybody, with Howard Dvorkin today of Debt.com. And, uh, you, you know, Howard, we have a, uh, a saying in the Army, we would kick off a story with, so there we were in the whole room. So there we were, right? Uh, especially if it's going to be an epic one, having a conversation about money, uh, man, it stinks. It, it's hard. It's hard in marriage. It's hard with your kids off of that. You got to have it with somebody who sees you constantly as that perpetual five-year-old that they had to take care of. So there we were, right? Like how did the, you, you had to face this at some point in time and you were pretty young when, when you had to start facing uh, a conversation like this, if I remember right. Um, how, how would you Certainly. do that? My, my father passed away when I was a kid and my mom raised me all throughout my years. And, you know, when she got older, frankly, the money ran out and I had to try to take, insert my influence. But unfortunately, when you do that, parents often think of you, they don't see you as an adult, certainly don't see you as an accomplished adult, although they like telling their friends how great you've become. <laughs> but uh, when it's you and you're, you're talking to mom or dad, they see you as a child. And how about Howard, you were, you, you were like a CPA, right? You're, like, you're an accountant at that point. In time. I am a CPA. I'm also <laughs> a certified credit counselor. I've written two books. Uh, one did, you know, that, that did quite well uh, yeah. in the sales area. Um, but I will tell you that it didn't matter. I was still a child and they didn't want to hear it, but everybody uh, affects it. Whether you're dealing with your children who are 18, who have never gotten a credit card, they think they know everything. And, or you're dealing with your spouse who, oh, I'm the spouse. I, I know everything about credit cards. And you know what? It's, it's all psychology, Tony. I yeah. mean, people need to understand that you have to have approach people differently certainly in the cycle of life and and never give up and keep pushing it but you don't have to be overbearing you maybe mention it plant the seed come back a couple of weeks later plant another seed and then start to slowly talk to your parents about what's going on i think a great first step is looking at you know what are the legal documents yeah. Is your will in order? Who's your who's your beneficiaries? Um, who's who's going to take care of you? Who's going to make major decisions for you if you are incapacitated? Start looking there. Make sure everything's together. Get the next step is 
get a list of major contacts, meaning who's your doctor? Who do you, did you buy funeral plots? Who's your pre, pre, priest or, or what church do you belong to? Whatever the case may be. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, go through and understand what am I facing if you're not here and who is facing it? Who's your executor? And, and give them a copy of your will. So you have that and understand where, where's the money? That's the next step. Let's start to pitch in and look and copy me today. All statements are electronic. So you can copy the, the person that's going to be handling your, your finances on their financial statements and certainly get copies of your bank statements and, and start to look at them as the child to make sure that mom or dad is not spending money recklessly or giving it away to somebody who probably doesn't deserve it. So make right. sure that you, you eyeball those statements every month, then go through. And that way you have a very, very strong uh, understanding of the finances, but to get to that point takes a lot of time and it takes a lot of patience. Well, and, and I really like the consultative approach that, that you hint at with that, that, that gives you an ability to, to help them get organized. You obviously that that's the end state. They're going to have to reorganize things in order to get out of the problem that they're in. Um, and if you're not an accountant and you're not a CPA, um, you, you might not be able to know exactly what to do when you get there, but what you can do is get that information together the same way that you pull everything together for somebody that might help you with your taxes at the end of the year. And, and that can be much less, it could be much less obtrusive. It could be, um, you, you might have to pace out that conversation. It might not be a sit down with them in a bruiser, like five hour session of pulling everything out to pen and paper, but breaking that up. Um, you know, no doesn't mean no. If a conversation stops and they don't want to discuss it or work through it because, you know, they're seeing you as, as just, you know, as, as as little Tony at that point in time, um, then you might have to break contact and come back at that conversation, maybe from a from a slightly different angle. Like, hey, mom, if you were if you if you went in the hospital today, um, what would you and you were going to ask me to bring you stuff? Where am I going to find that stuff to bring to you? Like where? Where do I need to look? Have you put that in one place? When I was uh, How about something simple, who's your lawyer? That's <laughs> very yeah, simple. Yeah. Who wrote yeah. your will? Right. I mean, you know, unfortunately, we just recently had a passing of a of a family member, and my wife is the executor. Well, she never got a copy of the will. Uh, you know, not that I knew, and it was just changed like the week before she passed. But yeah. so there was no time. And unfortunately, now we're going around trying to find all this. Right. So we had no idea. And now we're running around trying to find all this information out, which is very challenging sometimes, especially if on the other side, not only do you have to fight uh, uh, the, the mom, but maybe mom is remarried and Dad, stepdad doesn't want to share that information. Right, <laughs> right. So it's, you also have those challenges. It's yeah. interesting to see the dynamics that happen in uh, families. And certainly when you're dealing with this, you need to take a consultative approach and be there. In my wife's case, she didn't even know she was an executor because her sister never told her that yeah. she was the executor. And all yeah. of a sudden she's th it's thrown in her lap and she has to scramble a little bit. So make sure that those decisions are verbalized beforehand. Well, and, and that is one you know, in the process and our senior moves techniques. Um, one of the earlier processes is, is if you're going to do a relocation, that's an earlier task before you start packing everything up find thing. It's a great opportunity to do it. It's a, it's a great icebreaker, if you will, to prepare for the move in the front side, because it tends, just like you said, it tends to open up other conversations like, Hey, who's your attorney? Where's your will? You don't have a will. Oh, that's good. We can put that up. You know, as, as we land, we know that these are additional things we can walk through and start bringing people through to, to come in and help. Well, you know, also, speak, it's yeah. scary when people move, say they move from different states, 
you have to redo your will to make sure it's in conformity with that state's laws. Completely. So, Completely. Great. Really, really. Uh, uh, that's, a, that's a great topic. OK, so uh, that is that is the benefit, too, of bringing in those those experts and those people, sometimes that outside perspective to remind you um, of that kind of stuff. You know, I, I do want to I actually want to make a plug for you here. So as, as we head out into the second into the this second break here, I'd like to highlight that dot com and show a little bit of what you guys do. So I appreciate any plug. So thank you. <laughs> okay. Well, let's I'll I'm going to throw that back out there me. and let's see you up front and then we'll come back and wrap up our conversation. Terrific. If you feel like you're fighting a losing battle with debt, you need an ally, someone who can help you overcome the challenges of minimum payments and high interest rates that can make it impossible to gain ground. The Debt.com team is here to give you the support that you need. We'll help you connect with the right person to overcome debt. We'll help you find a program that works for your budget and your goals. You can get out of debt faster with the right support. Visit Debt.com slash Vicky today. Tony Sievers with Parent Projects. I've got Howard Dvorkin with us, chairman of Debt.com, uh, CPA, author, and really a, a true servant who has been out there for 30 years um, working with families to help them understand the impacts of debt, to get through the struggles of debt and ultimately free themselves of the pressures of debt. So, and I appreciate having you. Thanks again for joining us today. Thank you for having me. It's my pleasure. So you know, we, we've had this opportunity to understand you know, the debt does matter. It's got an impact in that conversation. It's a hard conversation in a parent project because I'm still Tony Baloney uh, and we've got these other things that we have to work through, regardless of what you may have accomplished in life or done or what your professional expertise might be. Those are just real hiccups to it. You know, one of the other complexities is often if you have uh, siblings and, and other family members, lots of hands in the pot that come into to organizing those thoughts and those processes and, and where they go. Uh, and, and I know some will utilize, some families can get through this. Sometimes everybody will bend a knee. Like you said, your, your wife being an executor of a will and everybody will bend to work to that. There are other times typically before a will goes where families might not be able to do that. And it's just, it can add to the chaos. Um, are there tools, online technology? There's some cool stuff that's out there. Things that you can think of that might help a family get on one sheet of the music or get well, started. Certainly you mentioned uh, mint.com is a great <laughs> service which tracks all your financial finances uh, using outside tools. There's also on debt.com, there's tremendous products on debt.com, educationally speaking, meaning we have budgets, family budgets. And regardless if it's your parents or if it's you or if it's your kids, Whatever the, the case, do a budget, go through. And I know it's not the most interesting thing to do, but it's a necessary thing to do. You know, we don't take vitamins every day because we want to. We take them to prevent problems. Well, yeah. think about doing a budget once a month and see how you compare it to the actual expenses. But certainly, even your parents who likely are on fixed income, everything needs to to work out. Yeah. What I see constantly now is those people that retire with debt uh, and, and unfortunately they don't have the income. So what are they using? They're using the credit cards again and keep charging even though they don't have the income to pay them off. Yeah. So it's very challenging when your parents are continually use financial products to, to pay basic expense and subsidize their living expenses with the intention, whether it's a true intention or just it's the reality that they're never going to be able to pay that bill off. Well, on and, their own. and therein that the psychology of when that moment drops and it happens differently. But well, a lot of people hit a wall, Tony. Yeah. I mean, sometimes it's like I'm getting collection calls from the credit card company. Sometimes I'm behind on my mortgage. Sometimes this medical bill, they're telling me they're going to sue me. Things, all sorts of things can happen. Uh, you know, you just have to convince the parent, the target, for lack of a better word, the target to 
give up some control and let you help. The problem is a lot of people, we've never been tra uh, trained yeah. in, in schools. There's no education for how to handle personal finances unless you go out and seek it. And yeah. on debt.com, there's certainly information on how to address financial challenges and what you should look for. So it may be the the child needs to go through and educate themselves so they have an expertise, a base, a basis to explain to the parent, this is what has to happen. So go through, do the work, educate yourself on debt, and then go and make sure that your parents are in great shape or get them in great shape. Yeah, there are, and there are some great tips uh, for those of our, our, our members that, that are watching or for others that come across this on our, our parentprojects.com. We, we've got a whole great series of becoming a financial caretaker put together by the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau. Uh, and we, we work in conjunction with them and have a, a phenomenal series uh, of, um, of what to be thinking about, questions to ask yourself, because it, it is, that, that might also be a, a hard a hard truth that a family member has to come to is you might have to look, take stock in your own situation and say, I'm not in a position yet to advise against this. I, I, I might need to learn a couple of things to understand what I'm walking into. And that's an admirable position to, to begin with. Uh, I think when it comes down, one of the, it, it really will come back to uh, not taking no for an answer or stopping at that though. That it may mean that you got to work on you to get into the position to help them but that consistent theme that I really do see is there's a solution out there for everybody. But knowledge it, it, is power. Knowledge is power. Yeah. And if you have the knowledge, you can help make things better. You also have to be careful. And one thing I need to warn people about is we're seeing an awful lot of caretakers yeah. Uh, yeah. absconding with the parents, with elders' funds. <clears throat> and we got to be careful not to trust the person that unfortunately you're entrusting your your parent to. And certainly, you know, these caretakers aren't the most well-paid people out there. They may be making $10 an hour, but maybe spending a lot more than that and they need to make ends meet and they may take advantage of, of the people that they're, watch, they're supposedly watching over. So you got to be cognizant of that. Certainly going through and getting copies of uh, bank statements to see what's going on or hook up, uh, uh, hook up your computer to see, get the statements, get financial records, and certainly put the uh, parents on uh, automatic payments for utilities and rent and all that stuff. But also I want to spend a few seconds and talk about long-term care. What are the plans? You need to understand what happens if you have to go to a nursing home. How do I pay for getting an attendant to come in and help you? Or if you have to go to a, 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 a long-term care rehabilitation center, yeah. which one do I go to? Do I have insurance coverage to cover the cost? Because that could be 20,000 a month if yeah. Medicaid or Medicare doesn't pay for it. So you gotta be very careful and understand that in addition to all the other stuff I've talked about. Yeah, yeah, th those are, and, and, and where are, this is where we kind of learn from our experiences, right? You, if, if you're in one of these challenges, it would behoove you to not pass the same thing down to your kids. This is one thing you don't want to give them. I mean, you, you, you give, they, what they want is your money, your name, your titles, right? They, they want all that. They don't want your debt. Um, and, and at the end, when things get difficult, um, planning to be able to handle the finances without relying on a credit card that just kicks it down the road or relying on debt to kick it down the road, um, that, that it, it really is important. So spending time, well, with, yeah. The good news is debt doesn't transfer to your beneficiaries. Yeah. So if there is an estate, the debt goes against what's in the estate. So if you owe $10,000 to uh, Citibank for a credit card, guess what? If the estate has 10,000, great, it gets paid. If it doesn't, that debt unfortunately dies with the uh, person. So 
it goes away. So that is a good thing. However, if you're sitting there taking out mortgages against your home or reverse mortgages against your home at this age, uh, that debt is certainly uh, going to result in uh, your your beneficiaries getting less yeah. uh, of what than what maybe they expected. Yeah. Well, Howard, I, I again, I just sincerely appreciate you opening up with us and tackling a debt and and that impact against that norm and some some of our members and, and families out there with what they can do not to give up, not take no for an answer, how to keep moving. I appreciate you and everything you do do in your life and your career as well. God bless you. Tony, you're a good man and God bless you and your and your viewership. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Be well. You too. Well, that's it for the team this week, and thanks for joining us. If you've enjoyed the content, remember to subscribe and to share this episode on the app that you're using right now. Your reviews and your comments, they really help us expand our reach as well as our perspective. So if you have time, also drop us a note. Let us know how we're doing. For tips and tools to clarify your parent project, simplify communication with your stakeholders, and verify the professionals that you choose, you can find us on YouTube, follow us on Instagram and Facebook. Thanks again for trusting us. Until our next episode, behold and be held. Thank you for listening to this Parent Projects podcast production. To access our show notes, resources, or forums, join us on your favorite social media platform or go to parentprojects.com. This show is for entertainment purposes only. Before making any decisions, consult a professional. This show is copyrighted by Family Media and Technology Group Incorporated and Parent Projects LLC. Written permissions must be granted before syndication or rebroadcast.